Okay, so we're going to examine the uh, profit and loss statement according to the absorption costing system. Last time we uh, determined what the uh, how this fifteen dollars per unit of fixed production overheads was determined. That was known as the uh, fixed overhead fixed overhead absorption rate. Right, and if we go back to the uh, scenario that was uh, outlined at the uh, beginning here, the manufacturing company that had a uh, budgeted normal production level of 1,100 units, actual production in the year one of 1,000 uh, units, actual sales 950 units. Uh, as you can see, we've already marked up this page in working out the profit and loss for marginal costing. And now we're just applying exactly the same story, but using the absorption costing uh, method to explain what is going on. Remember, if you get confused between the two systems, the number of units is exactly the same in both because it's the same reality that we are addressing. The company produces in year one 1,000 units, and sells 950. In year two, the company produces 1,100 units and the sales is 1,150 units. Let's look at how this um, uh, is recorded according to absorption costing. The uh, sales line is the same as in marginal costing. It's the number of units sold times the selling price of, if you recall, $120. Now we need to uh, record the cost of sales and we need to take the fully absorbed uh, full absorption costing uh, cost of sales. This means that we actually need to take into account not only the variable costs of sales so in year one 1,000 units are produced which according to the cost card is $72 per unit but we also have an additional factor here fixed costs, fixed production overhead costs at $15 per unit. That was the newcomer in our cost card here that we identified last time, $15. So that's an additional cost of $15,000. And then the closing inventory, remember we produced more than we sold so at the end of the first year we had 50 units left in inventory and that is recorded at a full production cost of $87. Always link this back to the cost card itself. You can see here is the $87, which is the sum of all the production costs, both variable and fixed. Now, here's an interesting phenomenon. The absorption costing method results in a possible over or under absorption of fixed overhead costs. According to the story, the scenario, the actual fixed production overheads incurred is $16,500. Let's bring this number down here and think about it for a moment. Remember, when we put together a profit and loss statement for the year one, we can't ignore the fact that $16,500 dollars of fixed overhead costs were actually incurred. So we need to uh, capture that full amount in our profit and loss. As you can say here, see here, because we produced 1,000 um, units, we absorbed only 15,000 of the 16,500. In other words, we have um, underabsorbed our fixed costs. We have to add the difference here in our profit and loss of 1,500 to bring the costs up to their full actual level. And having done that, we can see that our gross profit, which is the revenue minus the production costs, is $29,850. Now let's turn our attention to the to the uh, variable selling costs. We've taken care of all the production costs. Now we have to look at the non-production costs. 
The variable selling costs, they were $2 per unit. We sold 950 units, so here's the 1,900. And the selling general and administrative costs, the, the, the uh, non-production um, overheads, if you will, they are $7,000. And therefore, uh, our total non-production costs, 8,900, would be deducted from gross profit to give us a profit figure of 20,950. If we scroll back up here to the uh, top of the profit loss statement, um, the viewer is invited now to redo the calculations or to go through year two calculations following exactly the same logic. Remember, we are selling now 1,150 units to give us a revenue figure. The other thing we have to keep in mind, of course, is that the closing inventory number of 4,350 becomes our opening inventory figure at the beginning of year two. And now we just have to follow the same uh, logical progression of determining the production costs in year two. Remember, 1,100 units are produced in year two. And Of course, in the, uh, per the absorption costing system, we must not forget the fact that there are also the fixed costs to take into account. In the year two case, notice also interestingly that we produce 1,100 uh, units, which corresponds to the normal uh, production level for the, for the factory, and therefore 1,100 times $15 per unit actually fully absorbs the total incurred, actually incurred uh, fixed production overheads and therefore there is no over or under absorption occurring in year two. The rest is straightforward, gross profit, final profit figure. Have a look at the, uh, make sure the numbers work for you and then we will uh, discuss as a next step what a uh, a comparison of the absorption and the marginal costing systems. Now having fully digested the uh, numbers in the foregoing scenario, if you go back over and look at the structure, just review the structure of the absorption um, and marginal costing profit and losses, you can see that for absorption costing the uh, production costs are grouped together, both the variable and the fixed production costs to give us the gross profit, whereas the marginal costing system is focusing on all variable production and non-production costs. So the variable costs of all types, that's what is included in uh, determining the contribution. It's a subtle distinction, but one which becomes clear if you go back and look at the kind of costs which are being extracted and where they are being uh, presented in the, in the uh, profit and loss formats. Now the other thing to notice in comparing the two uh, methods is that uh, the absorption costing and the marginal costing profits in the were differed from each other in, in a given year. For example, in year one, the marginal costing profit was twenty thousand two hundred dollars, whereas the absorption costing profit was twenty thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. That's for the same year, the same reality, the same number of units produced and sold, and so on. And yet, the two methods give us different profit figures. Now, why is this the case? The answer lies in the change in inventory. Inventory went up. And therefore, we can say that as the inventory increases from one period to the next, then the profits that are determined under the absorption costing system will be greater than under the marginal costing system. You can see that here. The absorption costing has a profit which is $750 larger than the marginal costing. And the, and the key here, the key to the, the secret to this increase 
is, think about this. The marginal costing took all of the fixed costs uh, into account in, for year one. In the absorption costing, some of the fixed costs did not appear in year one profit and loss. Which fixed costs were they? They were the $15 of fixed costs connected to the 50 units that were produced and put into inventory. These fixed costs, which if you multiply 15 by 50 gives us 750, were actually parked in the inventory. They were withheld from the profit and loss statement, which is why the absorption costing method produced a higher profit than the marginal costing when inventory increased. Now, I leave it to the viewer to think about what happens if the inventory decreases. And the opposite effect will happen, and we would expect profits under the absorption costing system to be smaller than under the marginal costing system. Let's see if that's the case. In our scenario for year two, the marginal costing profit was 29400 You can check the, um, the earlier discussion that was conducted. And the absorption costing profit was, in fact, 28650 The difference between the two? Right again, $750. That's because the inventory went from 50 units to 0 units. And those 50 units contained fixed costs of $15 per unit pertaining to the year one. And now they're being released through the profit and loss account.